Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Well, in today's video, I want to talk all about fall planting cool flowers. And I have done a video similar to this when I very early spring planted my cool flowers, but I think I've only shown you my fall planted hardy annuals growing here in the garden. So today I really want to walk you through exactly what I plant in the fall, which flowers I choose to start inside and transplant out, which ones I direct sow. I want to take a kind of a deep dive into the cool flowers book and especially focus on a page that I kind of ignored my first year growing cool flowers, which is really the key to having success right from the start. It really gives you all the information you need. So I wanna review that page together. And then I also just want to share the experience that I've had here in 6B growing cool flowers. Lisa has given us so much wonderful and valuable information. And I'm hoping that by sharing my experience in a different zone, I'm in Southern Pennsylvania, zone 6b where the climate here is very hot and humid in the summer and extremely cold in the winter we get a lot of rain you know often we get 50 inches of rain over the course of the year heavy snow loads and my ground freezes which is different from Lisa so I'm hoping that by sharing my experiences with cool flowers going into my fifth year growing them that it will really help especially those that are in zones similar to mine but just so you know the principle of cool flowers can be used no matter what zone you're in and I will go ahead and talk you through that so once we talk about all that I also want to direct seed some cool flowers with you today I'll show you all my transplants and then I want to answer some questions that I thought wow I wish I would have had the answer to that question when I started this journey and I really just hope this video will be helpful and if you're new to cool flowers please go ahead and either get the cool flowers book out from your library or purchase it. I think it's less than $20. It's an incredible resource to have. Even though I've been doing it five years, I reference it all the time. It's really a reference book and it will give you all the information you need on growing cool flowers and all the answers are right there. Now with all that being said, let's talk about the most important part. What is a cool flower? or What is a hardy annual? Because I think this is kind of a new concept to a lot of us. At least here in America, it's really not that common to plant hardy annuals. I see it happening a lot more actually over in Europe. But here, you know, come this time of year, people talk about planting a fall vegetable garden, but this is a great time of year to plant hardy annuals. What you wanna do is plant them six to eight weeks before your first frost so that basically they have the right temperatures and conditions to germinate grow into beautiful baby plants with a healthy robust root system and then they're just going to sit there all winter and they're going to survive and then when the conditions are right in very early spring they'll take off start growing and because we planted them in the fall or the very early spring, the plants will be more robust, they'll be stronger, they'll be taller, because they're growing during the time of year when they want to grow. And this isn't really in cool flowers, but this is the best way that I can think to explain it, is to compare it to maybe vegetable gardening, right? We all know that things like lettuces, spinaches, your broccoli, these are plants that thrive in the cooler temperatures. That's what they want. We wouldn't plant lettuce when it's 100 degrees in July, right? Same thing with this group of flowers. Think of them almost like your cool season vegetables. There's cool season flowers. They want to be planted in the fall to overwinter, or depending on what zone you're in, they want to be planted in very early spring before the last frost. So now let's talk about the information you need to get started. When do we plant these flowers? Which flowers can we plant? And should we direct sow them or should we start them inside? All this information can be found on page 138 of Cool Flowers. Let me just share it with you in a nutshell. Basically, the first piece of information you need is what is your winter hardiness zone? Because if a flower is winter hardy to your zone, you can and you should fall plant that particular flower. So for me here in 6B, anything that's listed as hardy to zone six and lower, meaning colder, I'm going to choose to fall plant that flower. 
However, if a flower is listed as say zone eight, much warmer than me, I'm going to wait and instead plant that cool flower in very early spring. So if a flower is winter hardy in your zone, you can fall plant it. Now, when do we plant these flowers in the fall? For that, you need to know what is your average first frost date and then you want to count back six to eight weeks. That's the time when we're going to go ahead and fall plant cool flowers. So for me, my average first expected frost is about late October, say October 25th. So I count back about six weeks. That lands me here September 10th. I'm going to be direct sowing all of my cool flowers this weekend. And how do you know whether or not to direct sow a cool flower or start it inside a little bit earlier so it's ready to go out six to eight weeks before your first frost? That is really determined by the seed itself. Whatever the seed needs, whatever the seed and the flower requires, that's the way we're going to start it. Some things like Larkspur, Bachelor's Buttons, Bells of Ireland, Bupleurum, they actually do much better direct sown out into the garden six weeks before the first frost. But other things, say Feverfew, Snapdragon, Sweet William, those flowers prefer to be started inside and planted out as transplants six weeks before the first frost. So it's really not what, you know, myself, me, Danielle wants to do with a certain seed. It's really what the flower wants and needs to get going and put on the best growth possible for you early on. And once again, that's all listed on page 138 in Cool Flowers. So let's go inside and actually look through this page together. So here we are in my edition and we'll take a closer look at the book in a second. But I did wanna tell you exactly what I plant in the fall. So let me first start with what I direct sow. Some of these things are already out there and some of these things I'll be planting today and tomorrow. So what's already out there, which is not here, is nigella. That is a really great one to direct sow and very easy. If you're just getting started, I would start out with nigella and bachelor's buttons and you'll definitely have success with those. So we do a bachelor's buttons, I'll direct sow those. Larkspur definitely wants to be direct sown in the fall and I do stick these seeds in the freezer for two weeks prior to planting. So I have a couple different varieties I'm growing this year. Bells of Ireland, I direct sow in the fall. Bupleurum is another great one to direct sow in the fall. That's very easy. You'll be sure to have success with this one because some of these are easier than others. Like if I was just getting started, I think the hardest one out of all these is probably Bells of Ireland. And I know some people still struggle with the Larkspur and I think what's going on there is they might be starting it too soon. I wouldn't do this at the eight week mark. I would definitely do this more at the six week mark because Larkspur really does like it cold. And then these two are listed as being able to be either sewn directly into the garden or inside in cool flowers. So at first I tried them as transplants, but then I noticed that they were seeding themselves in the garden just fine over the years. So now I just direct sow them. And that is Dara and all of the Amis. Now I'm only growing green mist this year, but this would also go for like a me magus, um, the white variety. So any of those Ami, uh, Dara can be a direct sown with success. So that's everything I'll direct sow plus the Nigella already out there. Now, in terms of transplants for fall, I do snapdragons inside, I do feverfew inside, and I do sweet william inside. And there are other things that I could grow in the fall, but as we do kind of our deep dive into this page, I'll share with you maybe what happened when I tried them, or maybe they were good, but not necessarily good for growing for cut flower production. And Grace needs to go outside, so I'll be right back. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at how to read this very important page in Cool Flowers. And like I say, when I first got the book, I just kind of read through it. And then when I was going to plant, I went to kind of these middle pages to see how to go about planting things, whether or not they needed light to germinate. And all that's really valuable. And each plant or flower rather has its own page. But what I really should have been looking at 
because I kind of did know how to grow these flowers, was this page. Because this has all the information in one place. So let's just do a few for example. Larkspur, which I told you I'll be planting today. So she has a botanical name, the common name Larkspur. Then right here, she tells you what the winter hardiness zone is, hardy down to a zone six. And she tells you how that seed wants to be planted. It wants to be sown outdoors. Now, in contrast, Sweet William, hardy to a zone five. So I can definitely fall plant that. Sow it indoors. It's actually right here behind us. Let's look at one I can't plant yet. Straw flower, hardy to a zone eight. That is a higher number than zone six, meaning that it's a warmer zone. So I would not want to plant straw flower in the fall. Instead, I would plant it in very early spring. And she recommends to sow indoors is her preferred method. But also when she notes sow outdoors second, she's saying basically that can work also. This is her preferred method first but this will also work. So when I grow straw flower, I don't plant it till very early spring and I do start it inside and put it out as a transplant. And the one other thing that I really noticed about this glossary after growing the cool flowers for a few years is that a lot of things that are listed as hardy to zone seven, I found hardy to zone six B. I can't really speak to why that is specifically. Of course, I'm not a scientist and I think we all could probably agree that the weather is changing. But as we go through all the flowers here on the list that I've grown, I'll be sure to point out either verbally or on the screen whether or not something that says it's hardy in zone 7 was able to be overwintered here in 6B. So what I want to do now is just go through all the flowers on the list that I've grown personally. I'll show you some pictures on the screen of the flower that we're talking about and also try to include some pictures of bouquets using those flowers so that you can kind of see what else you would have to work with that time of the year. Because a question that I see a lot in the comments section and also sometimes people message me privately is kind of when is this group of flowers blooming if we plant them in the fall? You know, what can they be paired with? Are they gonna be blooming alongside my daffodils? I don't really find that anything is blooming really along my daffodils uh, flower wise. Of course, there's foliage out there in the garden to gather and maybe some very early perennials, but even things like the tulips, this group of flowers, at least here for me and 6B, they're not blooming when my early, say, Darwin tulip, tulips are blooming. Maybe they are just starting to bloom as the very late tulips are coming in. But these are blooming more, I would say, the beginning to mid-May. So I usually do have them for Mother's Day and I pair them with things like peonies, ranunculus, and anemones. Those are really the focal flowers that are gonna be coming in when this group of cool flowers comes in. At least that's what happens here for me in 6B. And please, if anyone has other experiences with cool flowers that is vastly different than me or just anything that they wanna share with the group that would be helpful, please do that in the comments section so that we can all learn from each other. Because let's face it, especially with this, we're zone specific, we're climate specific. And you know, as I always try to say, I can really only speak to what I do here in 6B on either this property or other properties that I've managed. So now let's just go ahead and go through the list. There are 30 flowers here and I'm just gonna talk about the ones that I have experienced growing. Um, first, we have Ami Magus, also known as Bishop's Flower, Queen Anne's Lace. That is listed as winter hardy to zone seven, but I have found it winter hardy here in zone 6B, and that's that beautiful white umbrella type flower, and I do think that that is a great flower to grow for cutting and selling. And I'll try to point that out as well if I think it's good for cutting and selling, because some of these are nice garden flowers, and then some of them are really good as cut flowers for selling. Next up, we have another Ami, and that's the Green Mist. That's the one I'm choosing to grow this year. Once again, that is listed as hardy to zone seven, but I have overwintered it here in 6B. Next up, we have Dill. And I have to tell you, it could just be user error on my part, but every time I grow Dill, I think it's not really worth it. 
There's a lot of caterpillars that like dill that kind of take it out and I let them have it because that's what I choose to do, being pollinator friendly and completely organic. So for me, I would rather grow dill and actually support the caterpillar population, but I don't grow it anymore for cutting and selling. Next up, we have snapdragons. And I think really if I probably had to pick one cool flower that is the most valuable, hi buddy, cool flower to grow, it would be snapdragons. I don't think you can ever have enough snapdragons. Everybody loves them. And I think as soon as you grow them, you realize, wow, I should have been growing these all along. And a lot of people get caught up in snapdragons remembering the small bedding annuals. But we're talking about snapdragons here that you grow from seed that are grown for cat flower production. And I'll pop a list on the screen of some of my favorite varieties. But definitely worthwhile growing. Next up, a flower that could be considered either a flower or a foliage filler that I think is absolutely stunning and you can never have enough of it, that is Boo Plurum. Boo Plurum is hardy to zone five, so I definitely fall plant that. I direct sow it, it takes very well when directly sown. Um, you can use it as a green filler, but it does have kind of a beautiful, I would say lemony looking flowers on top that are somewhat insignificant. I use it mainly as a filler. But yes, definitely grow Boo Plurum as an early season foliage filler. Next up, we have Calendula, hardy to zone seven. However, I have seen it self seed here in 6B. I have tried growing a lot of different calendulas over the years, both here and at gardens that I've managed. I like it as a garden flower. I don't really like it as a cut flower. The stem is sticky. I don't find that it has an amazing vase life. And so if I have to choose between something like a snapdragon or a boot plurum or nigella, I'm gonna choose those all day long over calendula. And please know, if I say anything kind of negative about these flowers, it's not to be negative. It's just to help kind of give a sense of where I'm coming from having a half acre and needing to sell flowers, quite frankly, and needing them to last as long as possible. So I would rather grow 100 snapdragons than grow 20 snapdragons, 20 calendula, 20 um, drop more, right? I don't grow drop more, not valuable as a cut. So I'm hoping that you kind of hear my heart here. It's not to be negative about certain flowers, but just to point out the ones that are really good for cut flower production. Next up, Bachelor's Buttons. Hardy uh, in the book to zone six. I would be willing to bet that Bachelor's Buttons are hardy in zone five because I used to grow them in 6A and they would self-seed themselves. So I really feel like if I see a flower self-seed itself and come back the following spring, that's a good indication that it's winter hardy in my zone. I like to grow Blue Boy. That's a beautiful one and everybody loves the blue flowers. Also remember too, you have um, holidays like Memorial Day in May when you really might wanna have those blue flowers. So bachelor's buttons is really a winner. Next up, we have a really great one that I cannot live without and that is Dara. Dara is very similar in form to Queen Anne's Lace, a me, but it comes in that beautiful kind of eggplant burgundy color. It's a beautiful umbrella flower. And once I started growing Dara, from henceforth, I could never not grow Dara. That's how much I really love it. And things, and I just think it brings so much beautiful sparkle and sophistication, elegance, and I think it really elevates a bouquet. It makes it look a little more expensive, quite frankly. So definitely one to grow. Um, List in the book is hardy to zone seven. Once again, I've tried it here in 6B and it is hardy here in Southern Pennsylvania. Next on the list is one that deserves a little bit of explanation in terms of climate. That's delphinium and delphinium is listed in the book as hardy to zone three. Some people consider delphinium a perennial. If you live in an area where delphinium is a true perennial, I would love to hear any information you have on that. Here in my climate, what I see is that we're just way too wet to keep delphinium happy. Um, it either gets sickly, it disappears, it rots out. So I actually 
don't plant delphinium until the very early spring and I'll link a video in the cards showing the time of year that I plant delphinium it's the same time I plant my fox gloves but even though that's listed in the book as hardy to zone three and it is it can make it through the winter and maybe if you lived in a climate where you didn't get so much moisture whether that be rain or snow you could do a fall planting but for me here in 6b i find it's not worth it it's a waste of time money and space to plant it in the fall i plant it in the spring but please if you have uh, further thoughts on that and you're in a different climate please let us all know next up is larkspur which is hardy to zone six I have been growing larkspur right from the beginning. I remember a beautiful hummingbird visited my larkspur the first year I had rows going like this all the way down on our whole garden. I had a row of larkspur, incredibly easy to grow. Like I said earlier, stick that seed in the freezer for two weeks prior to planting, direct sow it six weeks before your first frost and you'll have success. There are all different colors. They're beautiful. If you have a smaller space like me, I would say take into consideration that blue factor. Um, I prefer to only grow Larkspur that is blue. Let's face it, it's actually dark purple. <laughs> but also, Larkspur is a good um, replacement for delphinium if you really struggle with delphinium. It's a lot easier for those of us in wet climates. Next up is Sweet William, which is hardy to zone five and which definitely needs to be started inside and then transplanted out into the garden. I've kind of had a on again, off again relationship with Sweet William. I really can't decide whether or not it's worth it, but I'm gonna give it another go this year and I'll tell you how it goes. But once again, hardy to zone five and definitely start it inside. You wouldn't wanna direct sow those. I actually have to buy the pelleted seed. That makes it a little bit easier when it comes to sowing Sweet William. Next up is foxglove and foxglove is a flower. Once again, I couldn't live without, even if I didn't sell flowers, even if I just wanted to arrange flowers for myself, I would grow lots and lots of foxglove. The only variety of foxglove that I grow is foxy foxglove. That is a variety that blooms the same year that you plant it. So I plant foxglove, even though it's listed as hardy to zone five, I choose to plant it in the spring based on the amount of disease that I see happen if I plant it in the fall. Once again, that's probably because the amount of moisture that's here in Southern Pennsylvania. Also too, you should know that my property, if you, I'm not sure if it comes across in a video or not, and it's something I'm trying to work on, but our property also tends to collect water, just the way that the land is shaped. That's something I'm working on. But no, too, not only am I in an area that gets a lot of rain, but my specific property here stays wet. And that's something that I'm working on. All that to say, I plant Foxy Foxglove in very early spring, about six to eight weeks before the last frost. And that's how I have the most success with Foxglove. Next up is Lysianthus, and I'll touch on this just briefly because I only have grown Lysianthus twice uh, in the six years that I've been growing flowers. The reason being why I stopped growing it is I find that for my particular customer that, you know, I'm selling at a farm stand, I don't need the Lysianthus, and it takes so long to grow that I would rather dedicate a space to something that turns over more more rapidly rather if i had more space i probably would plant more lysianthus it's listed here as hardy to a zone seven something that an amish friend told me it overwinters here in 6b take that with a grain of salt but i certainly trust her she said she had hers just on the side of her house she cut it all she sells cut flowers also she cut it all for customers but left a bit there then come winter, oh, the hummingbird's right there. Then come winter, she just put a bunch of leaves up against her house. Come spring, pulled back the leaves. Lysianthus was still alive, gave her another flush. Take that with a grain of salt, just something a friend told me. Next up is straw flower, and we see here that straw flower is hardy only to a zone eight. So I plant that in very early spring. I always plant it, I find it an incredibly wonderful cut flower to have on hand and what I have done is I've grown specific colors in the past but actually I just like growing the tall mix 
And just a little tip, I actually buy my straw flower seed now from the dollar store. They just have a packet there called Tall Mix. It's full of seeds. It's gotta be like 250 seeds for a dollar. Whereas I probably paid 450 from Johnny's for maybe the apricot straw flowers. In my opinion, not worth it. The Tall Mix of straw flower does the trick just fine. So next up, we have our sweet peas, which are hardy to zone seven. I've done a video on sweet peas before, so I will link that in the cards, but I plant those in very early spring. Next up is one that is worth a little bit of a chat, and that is Bells of Ireland. Once again, this is listed as hardy to zone seven in the book, but it does overwinter here in 6B. And not only that, but I personally feel that in 6B, you really do need to direct sow it in the fall. I say that because I have tried to direct sow it in the spring and it just does not work. If you have grown Bells of Ireland before and you've had trouble getting it to germinate, don't worry, don't feel like you're alone. It's a seed that I really have to over seed. I'm gonna probably buy at least twice the amount of Bells of Ireland seed than what I want to actually come up at the end of the day. If you've seen Bells of Ireland seed before, you know it's kind of a bigger, almost arrow-like seed. It's, it has a real thick coat on it. And at least just off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure it needs light to germinate. And anything that you direct so right on the surface of the soil that you don't bury, I feel like is a little bit harder than something that you're actually gonna bury even just an eighth of an inch below the ground. There's just more that can go wrong, right? Say it rains here for a week straight, that seed is gonna be kind of washed all around the bed. It's just a little bit harder, but don't give up because once you figure out the way to grow Bells of Ireland for your particular area, you will have success and you'll be really glad that you have Bells of Ireland. I have always wondered what is that smell? You know, the smell of Bells of Ireland? I try to think sometimes if I'm writing an article for somebody, what does this thing smell like? And I'm not sure how to describe it, so let me know in the comments if you can think of the right word to describe the smell. But just do know, Bells of Ireland does have a scent. It does get thorns later in the season, but as long as you're picking it at the proper time, thorns really shouldn't be a problem. Also, Bells of Ireland can be susceptible to a lot of diseases in areas that have high humidity like mine and a lot of moisture. So planting it in the fall actually helps to combat that because you have them a little bit sooner. The sooner you have them, the sooner you can cut them, you know, and the lesser the humidity earlier on in the year. So I really hope that's helpful because I struggle with Bells of Ireland. I know I have pictures to show, for many years, it's really only in the last two years that I've really got it down. And I think it's really due to patience, fall planting and over seeding. Next up is Lombata. And Lombata is an annual form of Monarda. It does look a bit like Monarda, but it has multiple stacked whorls all along the stem, a beautiful purple color. You cannot go wrong with growing Lombata. I feel like it's really the most underrated cool flower that I've seen in this book. It's not talked about enough. And to me, it's almost as important as a Snapdragon. It is bigger around than a Snapdragon, but you could say that it functions as a spike. You could say it functions as a filler. You could say it functions as a supporting flower. So completely worth growing. It's listed here as hardy to zone seven. And in this case, I think that is true. I had tried to plant it in the fall. I lost it. Now I plant it in very early spring and really do feel it is hardy to a zone seven. At least that's my opinion. And I apologize if I continue to look over here, but the zinnias are right here and the hummingbird is right in front of me at the moment. Next up, if you have never grown cool flowers before and you want to be successful hands down, you want to grow nigella, love in a mist, hardy to zone six. I like to grow the blue variety. Once again, blue flowers equals money, but there's lots of different colors out there to choose from, whites, pinks, uh, purples. And then of course you get the beautiful seed pods that you can use fresh and dried completely worth it planting nigella and if you're scared about cool flowers let me just say it again plant nigella it will work 
Next up is one that I want to once again touch on a little bit longer because I'm hoping to have some information here that you might not have heard before. That is Orlea, also known as White Lace Flower. A lot of people private messaged me about um, having bad luck with germination on Orlea flower, pest pressure on Orlea. So let me just share with you my experience. It's hardy to a zone six, so you can fall plant it. I happened to forget to fall plant it last year, so I planted it in very early spring. It did fine, it bloomed, and then what happened, and I didn't know this, but it was completely covered in carpet beetle which is not necessarily a bad bug, but no matter what time of the day I would harvest it, the heads were covered. I mean, covered in carpet beetle. I was having to wash the heads. And at the end of the day, I just didn't really feel like it was worth my time because you could plant a me mages or even Dara, which even though it's not the same color, it's kind of the same look. It functions the same in a bouquet as that kind of an umbrella head. So for me, if I was a gardener and I wanted to grow Orlea because I love the way it looked, yes. Um, but I, like I said, I don't want to deter anyone from ever growing anything, but I just want to share my personal experience there with the carpet beetle on the Orlea. Also, it's hard to hydrate. It needs to be put into the quick dip. So this is not one that I would start with. Let's just say that. Next up are our Rebecca's, our Black Eyed Susans. And just so you know, I actually do not treat Rebecca's as a cool flower. There are a lot of great gardeners and flower farmers who do. Mine all perennialize here. So I planted them once five years ago. I let a certain amount go to seed. They seed themselves. They basically function in and of themselves as a cool flower. And I have what I need. And I think too you have to remember that I am here in an Amish community where a lot of people sell flowers. So I'm also looking for flowers that are different. And because Rebecca is so common here and because so many of my neighbors sell it, it's just not something that I use my space for. And for me, it's not valuable enough to plant it as a cool flower. Once again, I would rather plant things like Bupleurum, Snapdragons, Nigella, Bachelor's Button, Dara, these type of things that are more rare that my neighbors, quite frankly, aren't growing to kind of set me apart from the masses. So we have two more on our list, friends, that I have grown, and I think I've left only a few off of the list that I've never tried before, but I will put all of them in the description box. That's Pincushion Flower. Um, that is listed as hardy to zone seven in the book, and I would agree with that. I would not fall planted here in 6B. It does great when you plant it in very early spring. If you are growing Pincushion Flower for the first time, definitely net pin cushion flower. I have tried twice now to grow it in the border. I feel like that is a big mistake on my part. It really needs to be grown in a place where you can net it because a big storm will come, knock your whole stand of pin cushion flower over, and then we're all sad about that, right? Last, let's end with a flower that I feel like should be in every cop flower garden, completely valuable. If I had to say five cool flowers to grow, this would be number two. Number one, Snapdragons. Number two, what we're gonna talk about, Feverfew. Then Bupleurum, then Nigella, and then Dara. That's my top five must-grow cool flowers. Feverfew is sometimes considered a perennial and sometimes considered a cool flower. Don't let that confuse you. At the end of the day, just grow it. There's a couple different varieties to choose from. I'll put on the screen the one that I grow because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Mine do perennialize, but every so often I plant a new wave and, that, and this is a year that I'm doing that. So I have some up at the very entrance of my garden all around my service berry. It puts on a really nice tall flush for me in the spring. And then in the fall, it does put on a second shorter flush, but this is not really a flush that's long enough for me to sell at my flower stand. But I can tuck it in here and there to bouquets that I just wanna make for myself. But just 
no, that's how it goes. What happens too is sometimes it'll get a very woody base, kind of like lavender after a few years, and you will want to then go ahead and replant it. So this is one of those years. I'm replanting a whole wave of feverfew. You do want to start feverfew inside, put it out as a transplant, and it's hardy to zone five. So here in six, I'm putting it out in the fall. So guys, I really hope that something in there I said was helpful. Just remember, if I said anything negative about a flower, it's not to be negative. It's just about to maybe spare anyone, especially if you only have a small amount of land to grow in. And you're looking at these 30 flowers and just saying, okay, well, I'm going to buy into this concept that cool flowers work. I've seen Lisa do it. I've seen Danielle do it. I want to give it a try, but I don't have room and I don't want to grow all 30 of these flowers. I hope that just by chatting a little bit about each one that I have grown specifically, that it helps you decide which ones you might want to grow. And the only ones that I really haven't ever tried is corn cockle, just because I have never been able to get the seed for that for some reason. I've never tried drop more, uh, just because I don't like the way it looks. Uh, I've never tried throat word. I'm guessing I didn't like the way that one looked either. I can't even remember what it looks like. And then of course we have listed here pansy. Um, I know pansies are kind of having a rebirth in cut flowers, but they're really not long enough to grow and sell at a flower stand. So that's why I did not discuss pansies. All right, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and plant a couple rows of bachelor's buttons together. So let me just turn the camera around and show you the way I prepare a bed for fall planting. I'm going to go ahead and sew some Black Magic Bachelor's Buttons. I've already sewed my blue boy there in the back three rows, but all I did to prepare this bed, and you might remember that this bed here had ranunculus and then it had two waves of Pro Cuts. I just cleared out the last wave of Pro Cuts because they were already harvested and all done. I added in about an inch or two of compost. I raked the air, I weeded the area, raked the area, and then I just put some mulch, which I just used some grass clippings in between the rows that we're going to be planting for weed suppression right from the beginning. So now we just look at the seed packet, see what the depth is. It's a fourth of an inch. So just with my hand, I'll go ahead along here and just make a little furrow that's a fourth of an inch. And I like to direct seed pretty heavily and I'll thin this out in the spring and then I just go ahead and put it there into my furrow I'm going to cover the seed up it says cover it a fourth of an inch give it a tap after you've covered the seed with soil And then we're going to water it in. And we will just continue to keep this evenly moist until germination occurs. These seeds germinate really quickly. It should be in about a week. We'll see these guys pop up. I'll go ahead and keep them evenly moist. But honestly, here in Southern Pennsylvania, we get so much rain. There's really no need for me to irrigate them too much moving forward. They will really just take care of themselves. Well guys, I really hope that this video on fall planting cool flowers has been helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't ever hesitate to ask them in the comment section. I will do my very best to answer all of your questions. Also, if you are in a zone that's vastly different than me, maybe you're in a zone four or a zone 10, please go ahead and reference what zone you're located in, what kind of climate you're experiencing, your first and last frost date. That way, like-minded people from similar zones can kind of get together and help each other out. With all that being said, I hope you have a great day out in your gardens. I hope you give cool flowers a try and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.